Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to learn about wrapper classes. And wrapper classes allow us to convert a primitive data type into an object data type so that methods can be called on that object. So let's start with a primitive integer. Okay, and we'll make that equal 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this integer um, with a lowercase i int is primitive, so I cannot call any methods on it. If I wanted to call a method on an object that is an integer, I'd have to use, um, before Java version 5, I'd have to use the new keyword in the integer class to construct it. So we'll call this one num1, and then I do my new keyword, and then the class name again, and then the number five. And this variable num1, this instead of being a primitive data type holding the number five, this creates an object. So this identifier num1 has a reference associated with it that points to a location in memory where a capital I integer object is storing the value five. Okay. Now after Java 5, um, and before Java 9, okay, you um, have a, a process that you can use called auto boxing. So what auto boxing does is instead of needing to create um, your integer object using the new keyword, you can do capital I integer and then give it its variable identifier and assign the primitive data type to it. And this is called auto boxing. So what auto boxing does, right, again, after version five of Java, is it implicitly calls this constructor. Okay, so that's happening behind the scenes. We're not aware of it, um, but that line six is the process that's happening when we do um, line seven. That's called auto boxing. If we were starting <clears throat> with a uh, or an object data type, so let's um, let's see, let's do a string first. So let's say we have a string um, called number equals, and then we'll make this string literal equal to um, twelve. Now this is not a numeric data type. This is a, um, a string, it's storing the one and the two as characters um, in that string. Okay. Now I could, if I wanted to take num1, I could say, uh, let's make this a capital I integer. Um, we'll call this number two. Okay. And we're going to take number, which is a string, oh, whoops, actually. We're going to um, take number two and we're going to assign it using the parse int method. So we're going to take number dot parse int. Okay, so now let's come down here and let's make a string and we'll call this. Um, ID number. Okay, then <clears throat> the opposite of auto boxing is a process called unboxing. So before um, Java 5, if we had a capital I integer object like num1, we would need to unbox it by saying int y is equal to, and then we would um, take the object num1, use the dot operator, and call the method int value. Okay, and that would unbox um, it would take our object data type, convert it to a primitive data type, right? Unbox it and store it as um, lowercase i integer y. 
Now, after Java 5, we can unbox um, implicitly. So we could just say, well, let's comment this one out. There we go. So we could just say int y is equal to num1. And what's happening in line 10 is that implicit unboxing. Um, it's going to do what's happening in line 9 automatically um, after Java version 5. Okay. Now, with Java version 9, line 6, um, where we construct new objects, um, integer objects using the new keyword, that has been deprecated after Java 9. So it's no longer um, part of Java. Now we just automatically use the auto boxing um, and unboxing when we're coding in versions of Java past uh, version 9. We're using version 8 right now. The AP exam, I believe, is version 7. So this new keyword is something that you're likely to see for wrapper classes um, on the AP exam. Okay, so now let's look at some methods um, that we can call from the capital I integer class. So let's start by making a string and um, we'll call this string age equals. And let's say um, this person is 25 years old. Okay. Then we're going to system dot out dot print line and let's say um, age blank space or space and then we'll concatenate the person's age which is a string right so the addition is concatenation and then we'll say in 10 years is and then I want to do some math now if I were to do this age plus 10 okay this would not work because age is a string and I'm not um, wanting to do concatenation, I'm wanting to do math here. I wanna output 25 plus 10 is 35, right? Um, in order for this to make sense. So in order to make that happen, I'm gonna call the integer class, so capital I integer dot, and then parse int with a capital I. And this is going to take the age that was input as a string, and it's going to convert it into a capital I integer. Okay, so it's going to actually do the math um, because now this is a numeric value that can be added to another numeric value. So let's go ahead and compile and run. and their age 25 in 10 years is 35. Okay, I should clean that up and put a space there. So we were able to use this parse int um, in order to store the age. Okay, another way that we could have approached this would be to have an integer, and we'll call this num age, and we could do our um, parse int uh, here, so integer dot parse int age, okay. and now that's going to change what we need in our print line. So num age. Now we would be adding an int to an int, right? So that's going to be fine. That'll be uh, 35, like we want it to. And when we look at what's happening here in line six. Right, there's going to be some um, unboxing here. So capital I integer, that's an object data type. It's going to convert with the parse int method, the string into a numeric um, capital I integer object. And then we unbox it in order to make it primitive. And then we could do our mathematical operation on that um, num age plus 10. So let's go ahead and compile and run, okay, and there's our output. 
And another method that um, you can use from the wrapper class um, for integers is the two string method. So we have a string called age, um, which is 25. Let's say we had a capital I integer and um, we'll just call this one num equals 25. Okay. If I wanted to um, to compare these, so let's do system.out.println. Okay, would it be possible for us to ask is age equal equal to num? Okay, so this would be a Boolean expression, right? And age is currently a string. Num is a numeric value. Can we compare and see if those are equal? No, this is going to throw an error. So let's go ahead and run and see the error that we get. Okay, so here we see incomparable types, right? String and integer, capital I integer, they're both object types and they're not comparable with the equals equals. Okay, now if I were to take my integer object and I'm going to do integer dot two string. Okay, now that's going to convert my integer object num25 into, <coughs> excuse me, into a string. Now, could I use the equals equals operator to compare a string and a string? So the answer to that is I can, but it's going to compare their references. It's because they're object types. It's not going to compare their contents. If I want to compare the contents, I need to do my dot equals operator that we talked about in our last lesson. Okay, so now we have um, a string age dot equals is going to compare the contents of that string. Then we're taking our object num um, which is holding 25, we're converting that numeric value into a string using the two string method of the integer class. So let's go ahead and compile and run. Okay, and now we get true because 25, the contents of the string and 25, the contents of the string that we converted from num, those um, contents are equivalent. Okay, if I wanted to compare their values numerically, okay, then instead of using the two string method, okay, we could start with age. So we're gonna do integer dot parse int and change that age into um, a numeric data type. And then let's see if we can compare it, that numeric data type, um, capital I integer object, with our integer num, um, which is also an integer object. So we'll hit compile and run. Okay, and there we get true. Okay, so why do we need wrapper classes? So first of all, they convert primitive data types into objects, and objects are needed if we want to um, change the values from arguments passed into a method. And this will make more sense when we get into um, unit five and uh, we start building classes. So primitive data types, when you pass them um, by parameter, into a method, those um, are passed by value. So if you change them inside the method, they don't change outside the method. Okay, their scope is local to that method only. But object data types, if you pass an object into a method um, by parameter, then it's gonna pass that reference, um, not the actual value. So when you change 
the value inside the method, it changes it everywhere outside the method as well. Its scope is global. Okay, so objects versus primitive data types will matter quite a bit when we get to chapter five and we start creating methods that we're going to pass objects into. Okay, number two, the classes in the Java utilities package handle only objects. So we need wrapper classes in order to call methods on those objects using the utilities package. Okay, then number three, data structures in the collection framework, such as array lists, okay, those will only store objects and not primitive data types. So if I want to create a list of prices um, for items in my store, I'm going to have to use a capital D double um, so that it is an object data type for those decimal values if I want to store them in a list. Okay. And then um, number four, we're not going to get into uh, multi-threading, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so again, this is all going to make a lot more sense when we get to the applications where it's necessary. Right? We're just introducing the concept now um, that we're talking about data types, primitive versus object, and wrapper classes are how we um, change between those data types.